All right, so in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create the infamous reaction diffusion pattern. This is a pattern that's been quite popular and it's been around for a couple of years, but I want to show you just how simple it is to create using Substance Designer. So if you've never opened up the program before, you can still follow along. And I'll even show you how to export out the reaction diffusion as a height map so that you can take it over to other programs like Cinema 4D and Blender. So without further ado, let's get started. So in order to create a reaction diffusion pattern that is completely tileable is very simple with Substance Designer. Let's go to File, New Substance. I'm going to be using the physically based metallic roughness. I'll just call this Reaction Diffusion. And I'm going to put my width and height on 4K resolution and then click on OK. So now it generates a whole lot of these different nodes for us. We'll mainly be focusing on height, roughness, and base color. So while we're in the graph editor, if I press spacebar, it brings up this menu so that I can search for nodes. Just type in react and you'll see that we get this reaction diffusion fast. So go ahead and connect this to the height, the roughness, and the base color. So in order for this node to actually generate the reaction diffusion pattern, we need to supply an input. So on the left hand side, if you go to noises, we can plug any type of noise as an input into the reaction diffusion. In this case, I'll be using a directional noise. So I'll use this directional noise one, drag and drop it over here and connect it to reaction diffusion. And immediately we'll get the reaction diffusion pattern. So if I change my scene over here, maybe to another piece of geometry, like a rounded cylind uh, cylinder, you can see that this looks like the classic brain-like reaction diffusion pattern. And it really is that simple. You just supply an input and this node does the rest of the work for you. So if I go ahead and select the reaction diffusion node, I can also play around with the radius. So if I want my pattern to be a lot larger, then I can do that. So this really looks like that classic reaction diffusion pattern. And you can see it's been driven by this horizontal directional noise. So let's go ahead and try a different noise type here as well. Maybe this fur three. So you can see with the fur three pattern, we've got these angled uh, lines on here. And if I plug that into the reaction diffusion, reaction diffusion is going to mimic exactly what it sees with the input. So that is really cool. Now let's go ahead and actually apply some height onto this geometry. We want to go to materials, default, definitions, physically based metallic roughness, and change this to tessellation. Now on the right hand side, we have this menu that popped up. Let's increase the tessellation factor because this is basically, it's almost like it's subdividing the geometry to allow for a higher resolution. And then if you increase the scale over here, you can see that it starts applying some height onto our geometry. Now you'll notice there's all of these really ugly striated lines. So to get past that, I'll always apply a little bit of a blur just to soften these lines. So to do that, in the graph editor, press spacebar and, and type in HQ. You'll see that there's a blur HQ grayscale. Now connect this reaction diffusion to the grayscale and plug in this output to the height, the roughness and the base color. Now select that HQ grayscale and just bring down some of the intensity. But now you'll notice that it's, it's softening this part of the pattern and those ugly lines that were once visible are no longer visible because the blur is really helping to fix that. So the rest of this is just dependent on you experimenting. Let me show you what you can do with the shape node as well. So in the graph editor, press spacebar and just type in shape. Okay, and then plug this into the reaction diffusion. So the shape node, if I go ahead and select that, you can see that it includes a whole lot of different patterns, square, disc, bell. Uh, but if I just go ahead and decrease the scale a little bit, you'll see that with our reaction diffusion pattern over here, it almost looks like it's creating like a picture frame. But this is really cool because, let me just decrease the scale a little bit more and then increase some of the tiling over here. You can see that I can start creating these really interesting looking patterns just quickly using a shape node. And now if I go back to the reaction diffusion and decrease some of the radius over here, you can see that it's going to make this pattern a lot more complex. All right, so this could maybe be a pattern on a wall or a floor, almost something that looks like it could be Art Deco. And it's been driven by this amazing reaction diffusion node. So that is the shape node. And if you go ahead and change the pattern over here, maybe to disc, Maybe we've got some circular patterns right now. You can see, so just play around with that. Maybe even uh, play around. Don't make the scale uniform. Maybe try something that's not uniform. 
and you can see you can get all different types of patterns and shapes. I know if I go to patterns over here and plug in some of these as well, you'll get some interesting results. So these angled lines doesn't give me this result. Maybe let me just increase the radius here a little bit. So that just gave me some instant angle lines, but the reaction diffusion doesn't seem to be working that well with that particular pattern. Maybe something else like this pavement. You know, the pavement looks pretty cool. Yeah, there we go. And maybe play around with some of the radius now. And you can see you can get all of these really crazy shapes. So now this is like a, a wavy shape that was created using the arc pavement and reaction diffusion. So you can see all the different types of patterns you can generate just by utilizing this reaction diffusion node. But if you're going for that classic reaction diffusion look, then you just use the, base, the basic noises and plug it in there and you are good to go. Something I also wanted to mention, if at any point you create in a pattern and you wanna see how it's actually tiling, in the 2D view, if you press spacebar, as, and you zoom out, you can see exactly how this pattern is tiling. So you can see this reaction diffusion is tiling seamlessly. And uh, this is just a good way to gauge whether material is tiling correctly or if it's been broken up somewhere. You'll just press spacebar in the 2D view. Okay, so you can see over here I was experimenting with some different uh, noise types from fur to some of the grunge maps. And you can see that you can just build an entire library of different reaction diffusion patterns. But now you finish with your pattern and you want to get it out of the program so you can take it over to another 3D program like Cinema 4D or Blender or any 3D program that utilizes height. So to do that, the first, the first thing you want to do is uh, you want to select the last node in your stack. So that's going to be my Blur HQ Grayscale. You can see the resolution is on 4K and it says L16, which is 16-bit depth. And 16-bit depth is going to be really good. It's giving you nice high-quality displacement. But just to make sure this is on 16-bit depth, select that last node. And on the right put uh, on on the, on the right side, you want to go to the output format, and you'll see that there's an option here called absolute. Select that and just change this to 16. So now I know for a fact that this last node is 16 bits per channel, and I can actually go ahead and export this out. So to export this out, you click on this wrench icon, click on export outputs. And now if I'm exporting just the height, I'll deselect everything, select the height, and I always want to save my height as a .tiff because that gives me the best quality possible for my height maps. And then you just click on export outputs, and there we go. So this should be on the desktop right now. Let me see. Yep, there we go. And okay, so it's just loading it. So there's my height map. And if I right click on here and go to properties, and go to details and scroll down, you can see that bit depth is 16 and it's at 4K resolution. So now I can use this height map that we've generated in another program like Cinema 4D. Okay, and just quickly I'll show you how I'm applying that height map onto some geometry with Cinema 4D and Octane Render. So I'll quickly create a sphere and I'll just create a Octane material, drag and drop that onto the Octane material, select my sphere and let me just put the segments over here on 46. And let me go ahead and actually open up my live viewer and just send this over to the live viewer. Okay, open up my material, make this glossy and I'll just make this a lot darker. Go to my displacement, add displacement, go into the displacement. Over here I'll create an image texture and I'll go ahead and select our map that we just created. Over here I'll just click no. Let me go one step back, I want to make sure my level of detail is on 4K because you can see it's still blurry over here. Put that on 4K. And there we go. And I can decrease some of the height. But now I've got my own reaction diffusion material that's completely tileable. All right, of course, I can go ahead, scale this down if I want to on the UV transform. There we go. A completely tileable and procedural reaction diffusion pattern that we quickly generated with Substance Designer. So you can apply this onto any piece of geometry. And I think it's really awesome that we can generate these patterns so quickly and easily using Substance Designer. Okay, and one last tip while I'm wrapping up this video. If you actually wanted to add some color onto this and export out a base color, in the graph editor, just press spacebar, create a gradient map, and connect this no last node to the gradient map and then this to the base color. Now select the gradient map, click on the gradient editor. Now as soon as I left click over here, it's going to create an additional color picker. 
I can just select that and delete that. Now select the first color picker over here. Let's maybe make this red and then select the second color picker and make that blue. And now you see that I can start adding some additional color in directly in Substance Designer. Right, so now we've got this really trippy looking uh, reaction diffusion uh, color combination. And then you can go ahead and export this out as well as a base color. And I would actually save that out as a PNG. Right, so that's the whole process for creating these reaction diffusion patterns. You can see just how simple it is. And I hope this has been useful. Okay, as always, I truly appreciate the support on this channel. And stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials. And goodbye.